okay so this is the course content boss okay uh, hope my screen is visible yeah 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 so this is the course content so the first will be uh, production planning overview okay then master data we will be discussing on the master data any functional any sap functional module the the initial thing we need to learn is master data okay so what is a different type of master data is there what is their importance how they are created okay what what settings we need to make and how the how the design has to be done for the master data and all everything will be discussing okay then we have the planning topics sales and operations planning demand management mrp okay see okay. Uh, production planning module is basically subdivided into two topics boss broadly okay. it is subdivided into two topics one is planning okay, okay. and then the other one is execution manufacturing execution okay, okay. so first we will be looking at the planning topics sales and operations okay. planning demand management and then mrp okay, okay. once those are done we will move on to uh, execution topics production execution repetitive manufacturing and then process industries okay and then finally we will be looking at batch management i hope uh, hope you know what is a batch and all right no i'm not you don't know batch okay i'll explain you what is a batch okay once the batch management is done we'll move on to finally we'll see the configuration part okay okay so this is the course content of the pp module okay and uh, before getting into these topics uh, you know what is sap why sap is used you have that, that uh, yeah i do i do uh, yeah i do i do have a good understanding yeah, so why sap is used you know right sap is a enterprise resource planning tool with which you can run your business day to day operations correct yes now yeah. so all your business activities like sales purchasing manufacturing uh, your quality operations your hr functions all these operations are executed through sap right am i correct yes now so uh, you know what is sap and all so that's okay now let's move on we'll see the first overview so in the overview part we will see what is sap why sap is used then we'll see the production planning module over so what is production planning module why organizations implement production planning module what is the role of production planning module in the entire supply chain cycle okay what functionalities production planning module offers okay when when a when an organization implement production planning module what benefits they will be getting out of it okay so how the pp module plays the integration with other supply chain modules like mm materials management quality management qm pm plan maintenance okay and then hr human resources finance fico financial accounting and controlling so we will see the integration of pp model with other modules in the sap system okay so it is basically a overview part introduction kind of thing okay okay so once that is done we will move on to the master data so what is master data so in the master data first we will see the organizational structure okay so organizational structure is nothing but how you are going to map a organization into a sap system okay suppose i will i will give you with a real time example uh, let's say you have toyota company okay, okay. no toyota what they do uh -huh. hello they manufacture cars so ah, they manufacture uh, automobiles yes they manufacture cars okay now let's say toyota is from which which country japan right it is from japan okay correct it is from japan even though it is from japan it is having its operations all over in all the countries in the world am i correct yes uh, it is the leading uh, car manufacturer in the world okay correct uh -huh. yes am i correct yes uh, so let's say we will take four countries into the system okay let's say first i will okay. start with us then uh, after us uh, us is the most preferred country for indians then after that let's go ahead with singapore okay because as of now singapore is the most developed and advanced okay 
let's go for singapore and then uh, okay let's go with australia okay and then of course uh, own country india okay so let's take example for these countries so toyota even though from it is from japan it is having its operations in all these countries okay now in the sap system toyota will become the client okay client is the highest hierarchical level in the sap system in normal terminology it will become a company okay company it will become a company okay now this us under the toyota company you have these four locations in different countries these will become company code okay these so countries will have four different company code for each of these four locations ah company code so what is a company code basically company code is nothing but is the organizational object for which you will be generating separate financial statements okay these are not physically okay. existing these are only used for financial reporting purpose to make the balance sheet to make the profit and loss accounts so they use this company code so for all the operations in the us country they are generated through a company code called us okay now for singapore they will be generating a separate financial statements like profit and loss accounts your uh, balance sheets and all they will be generated these are not physically yeah. existing these are only for a reporting purpose yeah okay now the next hierarchical level is plant okay so what is a plant yeah. plant is a physical location where you do some manufacturing activity manufacturing activity or where you do some uh, storage activity storage activity or you, where you do some distribution center distribution activity or where you do some uh, a hr office also can be termed as a plant so plant is a exact okay. plant is a real physical location where some manufacturing activity happens production there some storage go down you know what is a go down yeah, yeah. Uh, where you keep your warehouse. Own, uh, warehouse so those that is also called uh, a plant sometime distribution center where from the center from where you will selling your product that is also as called as a plant and now the hr location you, you have you heard of corporate office corporate office yeah. that is also called as a plant plant is a separate physical location where these kind of activities will take place so now let's yeah. start with india let's say toyota in india is having a manufacturing location in mumbai yeah. let's say consider they have another manufacturing plant in goa let's say they have yeah. another manufacturing plant let's say they have a distribution center in chennai Yeah. and let's say they have their corporate offices in delhi let's say consider yeah. okay so now all these are all these will become plants yeah okay so uh, in one company code there can be multiple plant uh, yes, yes, plants yes, yes, yes. Right? one under one company code there there can be lot of plants now all these plants are assigned to this company code this company code yes yeah, under under india all these are plants yeah okay so these are called plants now after the plant you will have storage location okay storage location is the place where you will store your materials like your raw material packing material your semi finished products your finished products where you will keep all your products that store that area is called storage location okay, okay? so this is the organization structure in the sap system from production planning point of view model and and from plant to storage locations it could be a, a one to many uh, as well you know one plant yes. can, can under, under mumbai under under mumbai plant you can have lot of storage locations lot of lot of storage locations under so mumbai. one to n yes. one to many yes 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 okay so this is the organizational structure in the sap system okay got it okay. perfect so that is the organizational structure so we will be learning how they are created how they are assigned what precautions we need to take all those things we'll learn in the system okay okay so once the organization structure is done we will go to the material master so what is a material a material can be anything a material can be a one which is procured one which one which is manufactured one is one the the object which can be sold outside a material can be anything okay or yeah. even a stationery pen pencil uh, paper everything can be stationery or even a spare part nut bolt okay yeah. everything can be a material in the system so what is this material okay. master how it is created what views you need to maintain how the data is maintained in the material master everything we will learn in the material master 
Okay. Okay. Once the metal master is done, we will be moving on to the bomb bill of material. So I will explain yeah. what is a bill of material. Bill of material means suppose bill of material gives you the list of materials required to manufacture a product along with their quantities. Suppose let's say I want to manufacture a cycle. Okay. So to to manufacture a cycle, what you what you require? Can you tell me? You need two tires. Uh, you know Tire. what? No, I mean, uh, tires. You know. Tires. Yeah. Then you require pedals. Yeah. Then you require seat. Okay. Yeah. Then you require chain, cycle chain. Yeah. Then you require uh, what do you say? Handle. Yeah. Then you require uh, bulb. Let's say bulb. Okay. Now to manufacture one cycle, you require two tires. You require two pedal, one seat, one chain, one handle, one bulb. Correct? Yeah. Okay, so this is the data you will have it in the bomb. So to manufacture one cycle, you require these items, these components with these quantities. That is what you will put it in the bill of material. Bill of material okay. gives you the list of materials required to manufacture a product along with their quantities. Yeah. Okay, that is what the bomb. So in the system, we will learn how we will be creating the bombs what are the different methods of creating the bombs how the bomb is used in production planning module all those things we'll learn in the bomb okay 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 so once the bomb is done we will move on to another one so i'll for the time being i will go ahead with another another one let's take curd okay so to manufacture curd what do you require can you tell me you need milk uh, you need milk okay good Okay, and after that, you require some more, some more curd, correct? Yeah, some, uh, you know, uh, some sample. A sample. Well, I will call it as a yeast. Okay. Yeah. So in the, if you are trying to produce curd, your, your curd is your product, the one which you are going to manufacture, correct? So for that, you require milk and yeast. So those will become in the form. Okay. Now, work center. What is a work center? Next one is work center. The master center. Work center is the place. Are a, are, a, are, a, are a machine where you do your production activity. See, if you want to manufacture a product, you require some machinery, correct? Yes. Uh, so those machinery is called work center. So we will be learning okay. how these work centers are created, what is the use of work center, how they are used, how they are designed in the system, everything we will learn in the SAP system. So let's be put it in the work center. So is it like a capacity planning, you know, work center would uh, yeah, talk about? Yeah, it is used for capacity planning also. It is used for capacity planning, schedule. Because, you know, the, the number of machines that you do yes. have, yes. Uh, you know, uh, you would have a work center, right? Yes. You know, they are depending on the work yes, center. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Then comes your routing. So what is a routing? Routing tells you what operations you need to do to manufacture a product. Okay. If you are if you are trying to produce a product, when you are trying to when you are manufacturing a product, you will do some activities, correct? You do some operation. Yeah. Uh, so those are put it in the routing. So if you take our curd example, let's say, uh, suppose I want to manufacture curd. What activities you will do? Can you tell me? Normally, if you if you if you if you want to produce, you need curd, to boil the milk and you you need yes. to you know put the uh, yeast in the milk. Uh, so you will heat the milk. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Heat the milk. Then, then what you will do? Add the yeast. Add uh, the yeast. Uh, to the yeast milk. to the milk. Correct. Uh, then what you will do? You store the milk. Store the milk in a refrigerator or then, somewhere else. Uh, overnight or something. Let's say. Overnight. Then, yeah. Or overnight. So this is what you will do. The put it in the routing. So routing says you what operations you need to do to manufacture a product. Okay, the activities. Activities, yes, yes. Okay. Now the work center says you where these activities are performed. So now heat the milk. Where you will do, sir? You will do it on stove. Stove. Okay. Now add the yeast to the milk. Where you will do in a vessel. Yeah. Now store the milk overnight. That is also you will do it in vessel only. Correct? So these yeah. will become the work center. So work center is the place where you will carry out your production activity. Okay. 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 So this is the master data. So in SAP system, whenever you are trying to produce any manufacturing, any product, you should have bomb, should have its routing, and then along with work centers. If this data is not available, 
cannot execute the manufacturing execution in the ACP system. Okay? Okay. So till this part is a clear? Perfect. So this is the master data part. I am I am explaining you with a real time example. Okay. Okay. So now the next one is once the master data is done, we will move on to our planning topics. Okay. So first is the sales and operations plan. So suppose let's say I want to manufacture a product. Okay. So if you want to manufacture a product, on what basis you will determine the quantity to be manufactured? Can you tell me? Based on the demand. That's all. How the demand is calculated? That's what my question. How you will how you will arrive at your demand? That's what my question. What could be the criteria? You will have some kind of sales forecast, right? Yes. Uh, sales forecast means what you will do? You take the previous sales data of that particular product. Yeah. Okay. And then you, based on that, you will arrive at future forecast. Correct? Yes. Uh, suppose you let's. Or say, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, <coughs> if you have a new product, you'll uh, understand the market dynamics and yes. come up with some kind yes. of an initial. Yes. yes. Yes, but most of the cases you you do manufacturing based on the previous sales data, correct? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So let's say you, a particular product is there in the month of uh, let's say we are in August. Let's say okay, I take from Jan, Feb. Okay, now let's say in these months, July up to July. Let's say one month it is having thousand. One month it is having 1,500. Next month 2,500. Another month 1,800. Next again 1,600. Uh, 1,400. Let's say 1,900. This is the previous sales of a product. Let's say this is let's say pieces okay. or numbers. Okay. Now this is the previous sales data of that particular product. Now for future months normally what you will do? You will take the average of this. Correct? Yes. You take average of this, and accordingly you will start manufacturing. Correct? Just, just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. Sure, sure, sure. so what you will do you will take the average of this it is and so your average comes around 1675 or something and accordingly you will start manufacturing yeah yes so this kind of thing is done in sales and operations planning so sales and operations okay. planning is the tool where you will take your sales data and then you convert it into a uh, feasible production plan okay? okay so how that is done in sap we will see that is what called sales and operations planning Here there are two tools: standard SOP, flexible planning. What is what are these two tools? How they are used? What is the difference between these two? Okay. What is the process flow? How to make the settings? All those things we'll learn in the sales and operations planning. Okay. 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 Once the sales and operations planning is done, we'll move on to demand management. See, you know now your your future forecast. Yeah. Okay. Now whether I want to do manufacturing based on this forecast. Or, or I want to do manufacturing only based on my customer orders. Okay. That is what determined through demand management. I will give you one uh, start, uh, one uh, example. There is there is a concept called make to stock, and another one is make to. Okay. So make to stock, make to stock means uh, always you start manufacturing based on your forecast, and you will keep yeah. your. Keep your stocks in the company all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose let's say we'll take example of uh, Maruti Suzuki. Okay. Uh, Maruti Suzuki, what they do? Cars. Yeah, they manufacture. They manufacture cars. Can you tell? You are in India, right? So you might be knowing some yeah. main major brands of Maruti Suzuki. What they have? They have Swift. Correct? They have uh, uh, Celerio. Uh, they have Swift, and then they have Alto. Okay. Now they have uh, Ridge, Ridge. Then they have Wagonor. Am I correct? Yeah. Wagonor. Okay. Now among this Swift and Alto are very successful models. Correct? Yeah. 
having lot of sales okay so for these kind of products what they do is they they go ahead with a strategy called make to stock here what okay. they do they don't consider the they don't consider the customer requirement based on the forecast they will always they keep on manufacturing and then always they keep the stock in the plant in the company okay okay that is why it is called make to stock whereas make to order means they don't do any forecasting and they don't do any manufacturing okay so what they do is when the customer order comes then only they will manufacture the product okay yeah? that means uh, for uh, uh, unsuccessful models or slow moving products in the markets they will adopt this strategy called make to order they don't do any production when the customer gives you order uh, then they will manufacture and then they will deliver it otherwise they don't after that they again they don't do any manufacture till another order comes okay. here make to stock they don't wait for customer order they keep on manufacturing the product always keep the stock keep the inventory once the order comes they will make immediately delivery okay so these are called make to stock and make to order so these things we learn in demand management so what is make to stock okay. what is make to order what is the planning strategy planning strategy tells you how to plan a particular product so different planning strategies are available in this make to stock and make to order we will learn all these things what are the strategies what is the difference between these strategies what settings we need to make it in the system how the flow works which strategy you need to propose to the client under which circumstances everything we will learn in demand management okay so once the demand management is done we will move on to mrp material requirement planning so now you know your forecast you know your forecast how much you are going to manufacture so to manufacture that product you need your input materials correct yeah raw material a raw material or packing material so that planning is done by mrp material requirement plan so where is a cycle cycle i closed it a uh, are yaar just one minute so to my, again i will go to my old example cycle if you want to if you want to manufacture one cycle pedals tires uh, uh, seat handle chain okay so let's say pedals two uh, tires two seat one handle one chain one so now i want to manufacture 200 cycles to so 200 cycles to manufacture how many pedals required 400 uh, tires 400 seat 100 sorry 200 okay handle 200 chain 200 now this i am calculating manually but in the system the mrp will do this active so when you enter your requirement as 200 and when you do mrp system will tell you what materials have to be procured and how much quantities okay that is what done in mrp material requirement planning and then the information goes to purchasing department purchasing department will procure the material okay so that is what mrp so what is mrp what are the different types of mrps are there to run mrp what settings you have to make it in the system okay when you do mrp run what what system what system will do what activities happen in the system in the back end okay what are the different methods of running mrp okay what what factors influence the mrp run okay once you do carry out how to check the results of mrp all those things we will be learning in the material requirement Okay. 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 So once the MRP is done, purchasing people will procure all the materials. Everything is ready. Now you can start the manufacturing activity. Okay. So that is what we will be moving on to the production execution. Production execution. Okay. So in the production execution, you will do first production order creation. Okay. So production order creation is nothing but production order will tell you what material has to be, what product has to be produced, what quantity, what input materials we need to use, what machinery we need to use, what activities you need to perform. Everything will be in the available in the order. Okay. So they will be creating the production order. Once the production order is created, they will go for availability check, material availability check. So material availability check means you have to ensure. whether all raw materials or packing materials required for production are having the sufficient stock or not that you will check in the availability okay okay after that you will be going on after moving to capacity planning what is capacity planning see you ensured material availability at the same time you have to ensure machine machine availability also correct yes 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 if the machine is already occupied with another product 
you cannot start manufacturing of your product on that machine correct oh. uh, so for that you will do capacity planning you will ensure whether your machinery is available for production or not you will check that you will do through capacity planning okay once your all materials and machinery are available you will release the product that is what called production order release okay once the order is released you will start manufacturing of the product first you will take the materials from the warehouse you take your in, in, input materials from the warehouse raw material packing metal that is what called goods issue material withdrawal okay then you will do the production once the production is done you will confirm the production order you will be entering the actual shaft load data like what output you got what is the scrap when you have started when you have ended the production who did it is there any breakdown details everything you will be entering in the data that is what confirmation after that you will be doing the goods receipt means you will transfer the manufactured product to the finished goods warehouse okay from where the sales will happen that is what called gr goods receipt once that is done production roll ends then you will do the uh, production finance people will do the settlement of the order settlement means calculating the actual cost and then comparing the planned cost and actual cost okay okay so this entire process we will see it in the system how it is done in the system sap system. Okay. so this is called production order life cycle starting from order creation to the order settlement this we will see in the sap system with that production execution ends now we have three types of industries so we have three types of industries discrete discrete okay then we have process industry process industry uh, and then we have ppa uh, sorry repetitive manufacturing repetitive manufacturing okay i will explain you these three discrete means it's nothing but assembly industry Okay. Best examples are cycle, car manufacturing industries. So I will give you example. Suppose if you want to manufacture a cycle, what you will do? Can you tell me? Uh, Hello. What I will do? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. To manufacture cycle, what you will do normally? You will take all the handle, seat, tire, nut, bolt, all those things you will take, and you will assemble them. Correct? Yeah, you'll assemble them and uh, on an assembly line. Ah, uh, assembly line, and you will get a cycle. Simple. Yeah. Okay. So after manufacturing the cycle, if you disassemble again all the parts, you will be getting your original parts. Correct? Yes. Right? Am I correct? Yes. Ah, uh, that is why it is called assembly industry. Okay. Now, suppose you should take a process industry. Let's say, ah, uh, food manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, okay, or let's say chemical industry. Suppose yeah. I am working on an ice cream manufacturing industry. Suppose to manufacture ice cream, what you will do? You take you some powders, take some powders and liquids, milk. and you will mix them, and finally you will get an ice cream. Correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. After getting the ice cream, can you go back to original components? No. No. That is why it is called processing industry. Okay. Okay. Now you understood the difference between assembly industry yeah, and correct, industry. Correct. yeah. Uh, so those things we need to learn. Okay, so so far what we have seen is discrete industry. Now we have to learn process industry. See, as a consultant, you may go to different. What is repetitive? Uh, repetitive? Ah, pardon. Repetitive. I'll explain. I'll explain. I'll come back to you. Okay. So as a consultant, what you will do? You will be going to different different industries. Correct? Yeah. Ah, so you should be in a position to handle all the all types of industries. Yeah. Ah, that is why we will learn process industry. So in the process industry. how the master data is created how the resources are created how the uh, routing here it is called recipe how the process orders are executed all those things will learn in the process industry okay okay we will see one entire cycle of process industry okay okay so that is what we need to learn in the process industry after that we will go on to repetitive manufacturing so what is repetitive manufacturing before that suppose let's say you are working in a ice cream manufacturing industry Okay. So, what are the different ice creams available? Can you tell me? Uh, one in uh, flavors, you mean, or uh, yeah, tell uh, anything. Tell me flavors or packaging, whatever. Flavors. Let's take flavors. Yeah, vanilla, butterscotch, pineapple, all these, all these various flavors. So you have a lot of flavors: butterscotch, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, 
uh, different different flavors. At the same time, yeah. you'll have different packaging. Somebody wants to eat in cups. I want to eat in. Uh, yeah, some, it's a family pack. It's a, a cone. family pack, and yeah. then cone cups. Then you have chocolate bar. Those things, correct? Yeah. So, according to your market requirement, you need to change your product on your machinery. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. So you cannot manufacture all the time cups only, correct? Yes. Uh, you cannot manufacturing all the time butterscotch flavor. Yeah. So you will be keep on changing your product on your machinery. Uh-huh. Right. But whereas in case of repetitive manufacturing, you will be having only one or two products in your company. Okay. Yeah. Only one or two at the max two. So those kind of scenario you will call it as a repetitive manufacturing. Okay. The best okay. examples are cement manufacturing industry and tissue paper manufacturing industries. Okay. Okay. So those kind of industries you will be using the repetitive manufacturing. So in this repetitive manufacturing okay. industries, how the master data is created, how the planning is done, how the production execution is done, we will see one entire full flow of a repetitive manufacturing. Okay. Okay. So that is what three types of industries we have. After that, we will go on to batch management so what is a batch you see what is a batch means suppose you are manufacturing a product okay so after some time you need to identify which the product which is manufactured on which date it is manufactured how you will identify okay so you will uh, process it as a batch okay uh, it's a process okay. a lot now separate lot you will you will separate okay. so you have this cars uh, recalled right uh, so recall. you know, yes 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 you are correct so that is what called batch See, when you go to a medical shop and buy tablets or something, what you will do on what you will check on the strip on uh, the strip? Yeah, you'll have a, a man uh, expiry. You'll have uh, expiry. Ma- uh, 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 above expiry, you will have manufacturing date, and above manufacturing date, you will have a batch number. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh, with that batch number only, they will be able to identify on which date it is manufactured. What is the expiry? Everything you will be able to identify. So that batch batch yeah. in nowadays everybody is using. So in the SAP system. how you will execute batch management okay got it got okay. it so what is the batch management how the batches are used in production how the manual and automatic creation of batches will happen and then we will see batch determination have you heard of this terminology f4 f4 no yeah first in first out ah uh, first in first out first uh, first expiry first out so based on this rules you will consume the batches of the input materials into the product Okay. What is the second one? First. Uh... Before first expiry, first out. Okay. First expiry, first out. So okay. the raw material which is having first expiry that has to be consumed first in the production. Okay. Got it. Based on these rules, system has to automatically pick the batches from the stock during the okay. batch determination. So how you will configure this in SAP? So those things will be done in batch management. Okay. Got it. Okay. so with that our training will come to end then we will see the configuration whenever you go as a consultant in a, any implementation project you will be doing the configuration mm-hmm. okay so we will be learning the configuration of entire configuration of pp module okay, okay. what configuration you have to do if you do that can configuration what effect it will have onto the system everything we will be learning okay okay so once that is done we will go on with integration of a pp module with other modules of sap this is very important from in interview point of view okay when you go to interview they will ask all these questions what is the integration of pp with hr what is the integration of pp with finance they will ask this question so we should learn all the integration part of pp module with other okay okay so once that is done our training will come to an end once that is done i will be sharing you at the end of the training three types of documents Okay. One is SAP certification documents given by SAP mm-hmm. Germany. I will be I will be sharing you the soft copies. I'll I'll show you a sample. Okay. Document. I'll show you a sample document. See, suppose master data. This is the document. These are given by SAP Germany. Okay. Are you able to see? it is a, it is a almost a yeah. two pages document okay okay so these documents i will give to you i will tr- i will i will teach all these topics but these documents will be for your future reference okay okay so i will be giving you all these documents now master data this is for production orders 
okay six is four four almost 500 pages document okay in this okay. we'll have lessons and after the end of the lessons you will have exercises to practice also okay okay so i will give you all these documents of pp certification documents okay after that i will be giving you process flow documents see during training i will i will i will show it in the system correct how to do step by step i have prepared those documents with step by step screenshots so that while practicing it will be easier for you okay so i will show you one document suppose let's say production order has to be created how the production order is created what are the different methods and with step by step screenshots are you able to see the document just it's coming up with step by step screenshots are you able to see yeah yeah so yeah. like this you will be able to uh, i i prepared for all the topics which i am going to uh, teach in training with step by step screenshots so by looking at these documents you can practice okay okay so all these documents i will share at the end of the training so these documents will be for your future reference okay okay so that is what this thing i will show you one more document if you want and suppose sales and operations planning Sta how the standard sop is done okay. this is the document okay so how do you be giving the powerpoint presentations as well uh, if you want powerpoint presentations also i will give it's not a problem but uh, what you will do with pro okay. uh, pro presentations you need to learn the no, no, for my for uh, yeah. so for see, my reference yeah, yeah so this is the document step by step screenshots how to do okay yeah so this is the uh, because whenever uh, you know i'm traveling or so uh, you know, i can keep it in my ipad or so yes and after that i will give you configuration documents okay the configuration documents see as a consultant when you go you will be doing the configuration only so i will okay. give you configuration documents these are they are also from step with step by step screenshots suppose batch management how you will be doing the configuration okay when you are going to the implementation project by looking at these documents you can practice or you can do the configuration on your own. are you able to see the document step by step yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. see if you do one configuration what effect it will have also you will have it. okay So for all the topics, I have configuration documents. I will give you all those documents at the end of the total. For all topics, I have the configuration document: batch management, master data, MRP, reports, training, PPPI, production execution. All these topics I will give it to you at the end of the training. Okay. Okay. So you will be getting certification documents, process flow documents, and configuration documents. Okay. Okay, so this training will take around twenty-five to thirty hours. Okay. Okay. Normally, I adopt two types two types of training. One is weekdays, Monday to Friday, daily one hour. Okay. okay. And another one is only on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. Saturday two and a half hours, so, and Sunday two and a half hours. So if if I take a weekdays, uh, you'll be able to finish it in a month. Or, or a month uh, not a month exactly. It will take around one and a half month because Saturday Sunday you will have all days, right? One and a half month. Okay. It will take around one and a half month. Okay. Okay. So the training happens through this Go to Meeting tool. Even you can record the videos whenever you want. Even this training sessions you can record and then you can play it off. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, and then you will be given the ID access SAP demo server. For okay. For practice, you will be getting around two to three months. I think just check with them. Okay, so you will okay. be getting the access so that you can practice after my training. Okay, okay. good. And then the training happens through real-time scenarios, not like just opening the screenshots and just showing the. It's not like that. Whenever you go to a particular industry, what type of requirements you will be getting? So how you need to map that into the system? Considering all those, sure. keeping in this mind, you will have the training and. Uh, each and every functionality each and every process each and every topic will be executed in sap end to end okay some people sure. think that uh, a trainer will open the just word file and just going through the screenshots it's not like that you will be logging on to sap each and every 
thing will be executed from end to end. Sure, Kumar. Okay. So this is what all about uh, training was. So if you have any questions, you can ask now. No, no uh, pretty much um, I'm good. So uh, the, the course uh, fee, uh, you know, uh, you, will you tell? Or no, no, that is the, the money part and all will be coordinated by the that institute. Okay. I am not involved in that money part and all. Okay, cool. Okay. So that's what was. But what is your suitable timing? Now currently you are working or uh, what, what is your... Yeah, currently I am, um, you know, uh, I am working and... Okay.